So I went away and I read quite a few things and I settled on Porcelain and Pink by F. Scott Fitzgerald because I love Fitzgerald, so it seemed to match quite nicely. So that's the one that you're directing? We're both co-directing both. Yeah, we're both co-directing both. Right. So the the Porcelain and Pink Mm -hmm. it started as a short story? I think I'm right, or it was, it was in a magazine. So it was, it was, or was it? Had, do you think it's always been intended as a, as a play? I don't think that it has, to be honest. If you read the script, it's very obvious that Fitzgerald is a novelist. He does a lot of really heavy descriptions, um, lots of long stage directions. Um, so it would make sense if if it wasn't intended to be a play. It is also quite short for a play too, so that's why that one's going first and then Real Inspector Hound is following. So have you had to re- rewrite it at all, select which, which words you're using? Uh, not particularly. I think there's one or two words that we might have had to change in either of the plays um, just because in in Porcelain and Pink something might have been outdated so in Porcelain and Pink uh, the story follows a young girl who stays in the bathtub for the entire play on stage it's a case of mistaken identity it's very witty, very funny but a few times she has to sing songs and those songs aren't really known anymore so we've had to pick things that might be a little bit more popular um not necessarily modern but things that the audience might know because it was intended as songs that the audience would know so it was not not in 20s yes yes very very jazz age very jazz age so which sort of songs i mean this is this is interesting because phonics mostly (laughs) a music yes and um the presenters, well, speaking for myself anyway, we, we, we have to think about what a modern audience is going to want to listen to. So this is interesting. What were, what were the original songs and the songs you thought that wouldn't be familiar to um, audience? I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, I've, I've completely forgotten their names, but it, it, was, it was quite old-timey. It was things that rhyme, um, very rhyming couplets and... Um, very jokey, flirtatious kind of jazzy music Um, but there's no music accompanying it so it's all the actress on stage singing so we wanted to give her something that she could also sing along to that she knew quite well so we're thinking of potentially picking something like um, Come Fly With Me by Sinatra something that people will know and that the actress will feel quite comfortable singing along to Right and that's but that's interesting because what what sort of time do, do you think the audience need to need to think they're in the nineteen twenties or the fifties or whenever they think? Sinatra yeah, that's was... interesting. Um, I don't think so. I think the play does lend itself very nicely to what whatever decade or era that you'd want to put it in. There's nothing in there that really is stuck in the twenties. It's a case of. Uh, mistaken identity it's about the relationship between a younger sister and an older sister who bicker i think there's a lot of quite universal themes we can all relate to a younger sibling or an older sibling that's just really annoyed us Uh, i think that's what's beautiful about the play there's themes in it that go across all eras so i don't think that we would need to be firmly in the 1920s for it to work (laughs) 